the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John, chapter 15, beginning at the 26th verse. Jesus said to his disciples, When the Advocate comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth who comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. But I have said these things to you so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you about them. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you. But now I am going to you, to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Advocate will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment. About sin, because they did not do not believe in me. About righteousness, because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer. About judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you. But you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but he will speak whatever he hears. And he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and, and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know, when you look around our little church here in Cairns, you will find that there is no shortage of images. As you walk into the church, you find a mosaic of St. Margaret or the icons from Taizé of Jesus. We have paintings of the Last Supper and of Mary here at the front. We also have stained glass windows. The Holy Spirit, whose feast we celebrate today, does not easily lend itself to imagery. One traditional image of the Holy Spirit is the dove that is drawn from the gospel accounts of the baptism of Jesus. However, the language of the evangelists in that passage is very tentative. They simply say that the Holy Spirit descended on Jesus like a dove, in the way that a dove might descend. There are two other images of the Holy Spirit in today's Gospel reading. There again, the language is suggestive rather than descriptive. St. Luke says that all who gathered in one room heard what sounded like a powerful wind from heaven, and that something appeared to them that seemed like tongues of fire. The evangelists do not say that there was an actual dove at the baptism of Jesus, or that there was an actual wind and fire at Pentecost. There is something about the Holy Spirit that does not lend itself to any kind of concrete representation, because the Holy Spirit cannot be seen as such. Yet the Holy Spirit is profoundly real. There is a great deal in our universe that is real but is not visible to the naked eye. We may need a microscope or a powerful telescope to see it. What we see with our eyes is only a fraction of our physical world. The Holy Spirit is part of the spiritual world, and so is beyond the range of scientific instruments. Yet there are helpful ways of imagining the Holy Spirit. In today's second reading, St. Paul uses an image drawn from nature. He refers to the fruit of the Spirit, which is the visible expression of the Spirit in someone's life. We may not be able to see the Holy Spirit, we can see the impact of the Spirit in a human life. Just as we cannot see the wind, but we can see the impact of the wind on people and objects. St. Paul is saying, wherever you find love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, truthfulness, gentleness, and self-control, the Spirit is at work. The Spirit becomes visible in and through these qualities, these virtues. The person who possessed those qualities in abundance was Jesus, because he was full of the Holy Spirit, full of the life of God. The Holy Spirit is essentially the life of God, and God's life is a life of love. 
It is that divine life, that divine love, which was poured out at Pentecost, initially on the first disciples and then on all believers, including ourselves here this morning. St. Paul expresses it very simply in his letter to the Romans. God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. That spirit of God's love works within us to bear the rich fruit that Paul speaks about in today's second reading. The ordinary day-to-day expressions of goodness and kindness, of faithfulness and self-control, of patience and gentleness, are all manifestations of the Spirit that has been given to us by God. The spiritual, in that sense, is not something otherworldly. It is humanity at its best. We have an example of humanity at its best in today's first reading. On that first Pentecost, there was a wonderful communion between people from all over the Roman Empire. They were united in hearing in their own native language the preaching of the first disciples about the marvels of God. In spite of differences of language and culture, there was a profound communion among them. Wherever we find such communion of heart and spirit today among those who are strikingly different, there the Holy Spirit is at work. Unity in diversity is the mark of the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit. In the Gospel reading, Jesus points out another role of the Spirit in our lives, and that is the pursuit of truth. Jesus declares that one of the Spirit's roles is to lead us to the complete truth. Whenever someone has a genuine openness to truth, a willingness to search for truth, even when it challenges our convictions, there the Spirit is at work. Full truth is always beyond us. We never possess it completely. In John's Gospel, Jesus declares himself to be the truth, and he is always beyond us. We never fully possess him in this life. One of the roles of the Spirit is to lead us towards Jesus, the complete truth, and to give us the courage to witness to this truth. In the Gospel reading, Jesus says, The Spirit of truth shall be my witness. And then he immediately says, And you will be witnesses. It is the Spirit who gives us the courage to witness to Jesus, His teaching, His way of life, His values and attitudes. We need the courage that the Spirit of truth gives us today more than ever. Amen.